presentation of the evolving marketing uh, strategy. Uh, let me uh, now go uh, to the next uh, speaker, and the title is the direct subsidy to the farmer, and it's uh, is a very fitting uh, conclusion to this technical session. Uh, because the issue of subsidy has been discussed so much uh, from the beginning. So here we have uh, a discussion on the direct subsidy to the farmer. And it's going to be given by Ms. Suniti. Gupta, she is the managing director of lateral practices in Mumbai, India. She is an entrepreneur and has been working in the field of information technology for more than 18 years. She started lateral practices in 1999 and is currently working to transform the company into a major player in the agriculture domain. She has a postgraduate degree in mathematics from University of Allahabad, and she enjoys reading. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. So, uh, Chairman, Sir, Sadhguru Chandraji, and friends, Namaste. Direct subsidy to farmer is such a uh, hotly debated and controversial subject that I, I'm not sure you know whether you know I should be able to cover everything in my presentation. So for the last one year, we have been part of many discussions. And we have spoken with many people, and we find that everybody is very positively disposed towards uh, you know this whole thing of giving uh, subsidy to the farmer directly. However, everybody is a little concerned that today if this project became a reality, how is it that we are going to implement it in a country which is as large as India and so diverse and with so many farmers, which these concerns I feel are very valid. Now, as lateral practices, we have had the honor and privilege of working with the Department of Fertilizer for 10 years. Uh, next year is going to be our 11th year. And uh, we, as a team, understand the fertilizer supply chain pretty well. So, so that's on one hand. On the other hand, for the last five to six years, we have been providing very innovative solutions in agriculture. So we understand the last month 
smile very well. So it is these two things which will come together, which needs to come together if I have to, or if the department has to make this project into a reality. Now, uh, my presentation is basically divided into three parts. I have a first few slides which, where I'm going to set the context for the discussion. Then I'm going to talk about LP Connect, which is our brand under which we offer all our last mile solutions through a series of photographs. I will try to explain to you what is it that we have been doing. And the final section is, of course, direct benefit transfer DBT in fertilizer. So the fertilizer subsidy is the second largest subsidy in the country after food subsidy. And despite increased consumption, the similar gains are not visible in food grain production or improvement in soil health. Many speakers uh, have mentioned this before me. Direct benefit transfer is going to benefit the farmers certainly. And uh, I mean, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more in my subsequent slides. Additionally, now this is a very important point. Direct benefit transfer can provide an impetus to sustainable and responsible agriculture, which then can help the farmer to get a better realization for his produce. And finally, there are today affordable and workable last mile technologies which can allow the government to make this project a reality. Now, what are the challenges to direct benefit transfer? One is that uh, the policy for urea and NPK is not uniform. I need not elaborate. I think all of us know that. Then, most important point, we do not have a policy to identify the beneficiary. Who is the farmer? Whether the person who owns the land, whether the person who tills the land, whether he grows, uh, grows uh, you know, the commodity crops, whether he is into horticulture. So as of now, we do not have a policy to identify the beneficiary. Point number three, we do not have the appropriate infrastructure at the last mile, which is the dealer retailer points where I can capture all these transactions in a reliable manner. And last but not the least, we need the infrastructure to be able to transfer the subsidy once the farmer has uh, you know, purchased the fertilizer. We need to 
transfer the subsidy into his account soonest because he may be paying four times the amount which he pays today to purchase that bag of fertilizer. What are the advantages of DBG? Point number one, uh, which I think all the industry people from the industry would agree that it's going to free up the industry, they have better cash flows, and hence they can put their energies into product and price innovation. They will obviously engage much more with the farmer. So the farmer is going to benefit from improved extension services. And the farmer today, if he say pays um, say 250 rupees for a bag and tomorrow he's going to pay 1,000, he himself is going to be a little bit careful into how he applies and how much fertilizer he's applying in the field. So what are the indirect benefits of DBT? One is that there would be an increase or new means of communication between the farmer and the industry. And second, the indirect benefit can be that it can provide an impetus to sustainable agriculture. What is sustainable agriculture? So it is using farming techniques which protect the environment, protect animal welfare, protect human communities, and protect public health. Also, everybody knows that the challenge for the next decade is to produce enough food which can feed the growing population of the world. In addition, farming today, it is a belief that farming today is not conducted responsibly and government Governments recognize that the only way to solve the food problem is to address the, you know, uh, is by large scale farming. Now, as consumers, today, if you and me go to buy fruits or vegetables, vegetables, we will always pick up, we will try and pick up a fruit which is, you know, which has the label organic. So there is this movement throughout the world that people want to eat food which is responsibly grown. Hence, I, I feel it is the need of the hour that the government intervene and address the challenges posed on, on the farming community, on the environment, on the quality and quantity of food production, and redefine policies to target the fertilizer subsidy so that there are maximum benefits and they are in the position in fact they are the only one in the position to do that now 
direct benefit transfer. What uh, what are the things which I need to keep in mind when I do a project of this kind? Number one. So there are three kinds of transactions which I need to capture reliably. One is movement from warehouse to the dealer. Point number two, movement to, from dealer to the retailer. And the, the last one is the most important. I, I need to have an authenticated sales transaction from the retailer to the farmer. And what are my challenges, some of the challenges? I, I do not, not have a farmer database. Who is a farmer? What data, if I have to collect data for the farmer, what all do I collect? I mean, his land record, the crops he is growing, the village in which he is, what is the status of the soil? So we don't have a farm database, which means we have to start from scratch. Presence of a proxy sale. We, we all know that you know somebody else may visit the retailer to buy for somebody else. So how are we going to address that? If I'm saying authenticated sales transaction, example, I may be doing an Aadhaar authentication. If somebody else has come, how am I going to deal with that? Infrastructure, not available. Linguistic diversity. I have you know, so many languages, say 22 languages. I can't expect everybody in all the states to just do everything in English. I have to take care, I have to ensure that I am able to do things which are in the local language which people understand. And there are so many different modes of operation. You have, you know, cooperatives, you have societies, you have the retailers, you have marketing arrangements. So any project or any system which needs to work in DBT must address all of these. Now at this point, we take a pause and we will talk a little bit of what lateral practice has been doing. So we have this brand LP Connect. Our tagline is Intelligent Last Mile Solutions. And so how is LP Connect related to sustainable agriculture? Now imagine that if a producer or a farmer could against a predefined activity plan, which could be a daily plan or a weekly plan, if he could collect what he is doing as regards tree care, crop care, fruit care, soil care, and if he overlap 
perhaps this data on other kinds of geographical dashboards. It could be rainfall, it could be soil, it could be weather. And if experts could examine this data, then they could advise the farmer as to what he is doing wrong. And this is on one side. You look at it from the consumer end. I mean, like I said, I go and buy an apple, and if I say that this apple has used 10% less water than this one, you know, I'll say that I should buy this apple because I'm, uh, you know, saving the environment. So the producer, if he's collecting this data, can publish it for the consumer to provide him transparency. So what does it do? All of these, one is that the agri or the producer or agri companies are able to have the ability to collect data, which is you know, the fundamental data, which always comes from the last mile, and it brings operational efficiencies for them. As a consumer, I am assured that whatever I am eating is responsibly grown. LP Connect and DBT. What do we need to do for DBT? I should be able to capture farmer data, his ID proof, data about the farm, ability to capture all transactions in the supply chain, ability to post them in a central system, ability to create a farmer database, geotag the farms, ability to capture authenticated data for the beneficiary. And finally, when we do all that, if I can uh, provide this data to the department or to the bank, to verify if it's a proper transaction to do the trans subsidy transfer. Now, this slide is a very important slide for me because it comes from our experience of working in the last mile for the last 10 years. What are some of the challenges that we face when we go and implement a project in the last mile? Scale of implementation. Generally, the scale will be very large. Like, let's take the case of fertilizer. I think there are about a one and a half lakh dealer retailers. And technology is the only way where we can take away the scale. Buy enough stakeholders. Most of the time, the people who are collecting your fundamental data may not be part of your company. So it is very important that we create a win-win situation for everybody so that you can convince them to connect, collect the data. Otherwise, all that technology is of no use. Process 
process not aligned with solution. When I'm at the last mile, I do not have a comfort of an office. I do not have a comfort of a table chair and I sit on the laptop and I can do all kinds of things. I may be standing in the field holding something in my left hand, trying to type in the right hand. And so if I make a solution which is disrupting everything, people will not use it. It is very important that it is so ubiquitous. Like when I flick the switch, I expect the light to come on. It should be so ubiquitous that the person concentrates on his work and he's not, oh my God, you know, what is this that I have got and I have to use now? Preference for over automation. Collect data only what you require. Because many times, you know, data is expensive. And if you say, I'll take an example. My uh, vehicle moves from the farm gate to the collection center. Do I need to track it completely? Or can I just track the two points, where it started and where it ended? So that is the decision which needs to be taken. Infrastructure issues. Despite all declarations, we still have problems. Mobiles will not work. Two places are very far apart. People think differently. Uh, maybe two collection centers, maybe 70 kilometers apart. Languages are different. Hardware is not available. One has to take that into account. Setting up implementation teams. I may think that I can do this in three months. Uh, you know, it's very likely it will get expanded into nine months. So think beforehand. How much time is it going to take? Think realistically. When you are rolling it out for the first time, have a high degree of engagement with the stakeholder. Because, you know, he's also working on it for the first time. Create a positive feeling for him, and he will use it. In all of our projects, we've never had a complaint from anyone who says that, Oh my God, what is this that I have got? Support for hardware and solution, very important. Um, I mean, if I'm going to be using something in a production environment, it better work 24 by 7. And in case there is a breakdown, let me have enough devices on the site so I can do a replacement. And finally, whenever we work on the last mile, we find three major technological constraints. Electricity. I may not have an assured supply of electricity. So I need something which is battery operated. I may not have an internet connectivity, but my mobile, my SIM card would work in most places. And if it doesn't work here, it will work there. And finally, trained computer manpower. I may not get people who are, I may get people who are illiterate.
literate or maybe who, who have studied maybe class two or three. So it is very important that a program which goes into the last mile must be idiot proof. These are some of the devices that we have used. And uh, the uh, one which you see in the right top corner, which looks like a POS machine, uh, it is uh, the, our most, uh, the best used device that we have. And of course, there's a lot of, uh, you know, use of Android now. We clearly differentiate when is it that I can use the POS device and when is it that I can use a, um, a phone. The moment you have a situation where at a location several people are going to be using the same unit you, the phone is not good. One is that the screen is small, you know, it has, uh, you know, several people have to use it, it will get spoiled. The pause device is very good. You can just leave it on the table, people will come, it's very robust, and, you know, different people can use it. So in the POS device, today we have done connected all kinds of equipment. We have connected because we do a lot of work in dairy as well, collecting milk from rural areas. So we have connected barcodes. We have connected base scales various kinds of fact machines, CLR machines. Uh, you can do an Aadhaar authentication from the device. You can connect a rupee card for the purpose of payment. You have, uh, you know, this device has a color touch screen. And the best thing is that it has a very good support network. So if it is not working somewhere from someone from the, you know, the next city, the uh, small town will come over and he will have a look at it. And it's cost effective, very important. A phone, Android phone or tablet meets all my requirements, but in case I need to give a purchase, uh, like in the case of farm procurement, I need to give a purchase, then I have to use an external device, which is an added cost. If, or if I want to do other authentication, and I cannot connect other equipment to this. Otherwise, it's a very good device. What lies a monitoring system? I don't think I need to talk about this. So it captures all movement right from uh, import consignment, custom clearance, production dispatch receipt sale, and one statistic I may want to share with you, which maybe you all of you do not know, is that this system gets four and a half lakh transactions every month from all the data that you guys submit. Okay, now this is a project which we had done in Patna in 
the year 1011. Now, and we worked in Patna district. And this, uh, we had given the dealers and the re retailers the device which I showed you, the POS machine. And it tracked movement from the rake point warehouse to the dealer, to the retailer, to the farmer. And whatever was the movement was then posted on the central system. And to tell you the truth, from 10, 11, we have met so many people. We have visited so many states. We have met so many people in the, even in the Department of Fertilizers, telling them that, you know, this is possible to do. Please go ahead and do it. I have some pictures. We have done a similar pilot in Meerut also. So I have some pictures from the retailer point. So you see, you know, different, different people are using it. It's very convenient. And in case there is no signal available at that point, he can just go out and, you know, kind of go and synchronize it over there. I have a couple more pictures. We found that, you know, when you go out to these places, if the retailer has young children, they will generally persuade him that, you know, why don't you go ahead and try? Because maybe the older people are sometimes a little reluctant. Okay. Now, this is, I'm not sure if Mr. Goes is in the audience. Okay. So, this uh, is a project where uh, we use our smart farm product to collect data straight from the banana farm. So on the device, the person carries the full calendar. It will prompt him that these are the things which you are supposed to check today. He will input all of this from the device, and he may not have the signal in the farm, but as he goes, he's on the way, he can synchronize. And the important thing is that when this person captures the data, it captures the GPS coordinates. So the person knows that he, whether or the manager management knows whether the person actually visited the farm or not. Harvesting, dispatches, everything through devices. And they can also monitor that, you know, you, you see the picture below. So he gives a purchase to the tempo guy who will, you know, then present it at the back house. So they exactly know for how much time the produce has been in the open because it's perishable. Uh, uh, this is one of our most interesting products. So, uh, and we are doing it for one of the companies who export pomegranates. So what they do is that in the truck which goes to collect the produce, they will 
carry the, the device connected with the thing scale the barcode and they have standard barcode so they will put the barcode on the crate they will scan 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 upload the data so everybody knows how much uh, of what kind of pomegranate has been collected from which farm and he, he then they will go from farm to farm collecting this this is a picture from one of the collection centers so all so, uh, sorting grading packing no computer is required we connect the this device with the weighing scale and they decide the sku by scanning the barcode and uh, you know once the weight it, it's a bit of a complex process i don't think i'll explain it right now but everything is done through the device and since inside the collection center i don't have a signal so when my activity is over i will go and put this device near the window and synchronize work done so uh, we have a, a product which we call guppy so it is essentially come from talking it is very much like whatsapp and we give it free to all our agri customers the purpose how is different from whatsapp is that the entire discussion between the two people is stored in a database with the gps coordinates so the purpose of this product is that i can collect unstructured data of the far i mean even today as we speak with fertilizer companies let's assume i have a bindi you know and i go there and i find some pests so people will take a picture and they will send it to the person now all these pictures and all this conversation is sitting in separate places here because using the same application i can also geotag the farm with this application i am building the unstructured history of the farm so using the same word i can just you know travel around the periphery of the farm keep capturing the gps coordinates and i have the farm appearing on google maps i'll show you in a moment we also offer this as a service you can call our person he will go to take the farm for you and we use the same post device so my farm appears like this and once i have done this i know whether my field person has visited because i can determine whether the coordinates are inside or outside in uh, in milk now all the companies they collect uh, milk from the rural area 
us. So we've done some really good work because we are what we found that in the collection center, everybody will have a weighing scale, a fat machine, and a CLR machine. So what they were doing on a piece of paper, they would note down, you know, this farmer came in this, 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 and then they had a computer where they would do data entry. There was a lot of manual discretion, and um, then the data would go to the central server. So we completely removed all that. We connected this device with the weighing scale and the fat machine. And so now when the supplier comes in, in this picture that you see the person standing behind is actually a person from the village. He will enter the supplier number, the weight, whatever is being displayed on the weighing scale, he just presses enter. He can only press enter. Then once the sample is put into the fat machine, he can only press enter because the reading comes automatically and done. Now, when the collection is completed, he synchronizes. And when the data hits the server, now this is the important part. Not only the farmer payments, everything can be done, but every farmer gets an SMS that today I, uh, as a dairy, I have collected so much cow milk from you, so much buffalo milk from you, and this is the amount you are eligible to receive for today. And say they pay in 15 days, so this is the amount you are eligible to receive till date. Now, what has this done? Generally, the farmer or the supplier may not come to the collection center every day. He may give it to a transporter. Now, and the trans, suppose he gave 10 cans to the transporter and he gets an SMS equivalent of 8 cans. He can he will visit the collection center the very next day and say so it has bought uh, quite a bit of transparency grievance redressal they don't wait till the end of say 15 days to tell them uh, tell the you know the company which is collecting the milk that there has been a mistake. <coughs> so this slide in a nutshell shows you know the services and the tools the, that we have for the agri domain. And uh, what we are trying to say here, the green layer is the wrapper layer. So we have Partner Connect, which tracks movement. We have Smart Farm, which picks up all the data from the farm with GPS. We have produce aggregation where I can do farm collection at the farm gate, including uh, you know packing, sorting, grading. I have dairy management. I have a retail product where I can I have a 
a small retail store in a village. I can just put this device and I can do everything with this. I have Agriscape, which is for the farmer network. Tomorrow we want to intend that the farmer should be able to get connected to the dealer. We are working on that. Customer order management, and we offer two services, farm geotagging and farmer data collection. And GAPI comes free with all of them. So that's about LP Connect. Now we come back to direct benefit transfer. So we, I already showed you the slide. So I need to capture all these various kinds of movement. And um, these are the challenges which I have. So tomorrow, if I have to do this project, what we recommend is that one should do a POC, pick up one district, create the farmer database, give the uh, technology which is required for or capturing these transactions to the uh, stakeholders, train them how to use it, start collecting the data, improve your system, uh, send this data to a central server, merge it with SM FMS, Continue to give subsidy to the companies till your system is completely streamlined. Introduce Aadhaar, bring KCC, do all kinds of things. Uh, understand all the challenges which are today in the field. And finally, once you have everything with you, come out with an RFP for a nationwide rollout. So what we have suggested that for data capture, I can use the POS machine, I can use the, you know, the maybe the Android tablet, Authentication could be Aadhaar, could be an OTP. Data connectivity obviously will be through a SIM card. We can also put antennas in locations where you know the signal strength is not too strong. And for payment, I, either it could be a cash or it could be a rupee card, it could be Kisan credit card, the works. So it could be tried out. So everybody is waiting for this POC to happen. And so I end my presentation with the quotation which everybody knows. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Let's take that single step and we are there to support you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh